as this is video 5 in the series of videos that I prepare for orals preparation especially for deck cadets who are uh, appearing for third mate or second mate oral examinations uh, if you haven't watched the previous four videos that's fine you don't have to watch them in any order I'll provide you with the links to those videos as well in the description section of this video uh, but uh, they are just randomly chosen five to six questions that I take in every video and I discuss about it so that you guys get an idea of how to answer if you get similar questions like this in your oral examinations all right the reason i take five to six questions is because i don't want to the videos to be too long otherwise it gets boring for people who are watching it so um, let me know what you feel about these videos if you think they are useful that's fantastic if you don't think they're useful then let me know how i can improve these videos or then i'll stop making these videos all right so let's start with the videos so let's say the surveyor or the oral examiner asks you that it's an emergency situation on board and if time is available prior to launching survival craft so if time is available to you before you have launched your lifeboat or life raft for abandoning the ship what additional equipment or items would you take into the life raft or the lifeboat all right so if you need to answer this question uh, make sure that you uh, convey to the examiner that you are fully aware that an emergency situation time is of the essence and uh, although time is available to you you cannot waste time so your priority would be to launch the life raft or lifeboat quickly because uh, if you are doing so that means that the vessel is no longer safe for you to stay on all right so without wasting much time and assigning people uh, you would take the following items if time permits at the time of emergency you would take some extra blankets because that always helps because sometimes people get wet if they fall in the water or if it's a cold place and the morale is down on the lifeboat or the life raft uh, keeping yourself warm really helps the morale of the people if you are warm and if you are fed and if you are not thirsty uh, and if you are not injured that's pretty much 50% uh, of the battle won uh, in regarding the morale all right then you should also take some torch and extra batteries torch uh, not only helps you to look for things in the dark within the survival craft but also helps as a signaling equipment so you can signal to the other vessels uh, once you abandon the ship and you're on your own if you see any other vessel you can signal to the other vessel as well all right additional food and water are always welcome the more food and water you take the better it is for you and for the people who are with you in the survival craft because uh, you don't want uh, to run into a situation where there is no food and water otherwise uh, uh, people's morale gets really affected uh, then you must take into account all the handheld radios VHF equipment, any other communication equipment, also EPUBs. Uh, EPUBs stand for Emergency Position Indicating Radio Beacons that will transmit. So if you switch on an EPUB, it will immediately transmit the position of your life raft or lifeboat through a satellite system to a shore base station, uh, which can help the shore base station to send a rescue towards you as soon as possible. So make sure that you definitely carry the EPUB with you. There are also other equipment such as SART, which is your search and rescue radar transponders that send signals to the ship's radar or ships nearby. Take, make sure that you carry the VHF equipments or battery operated or GM distress radios because uh, the more equipment you have for communication, the easier it gets for you to communicate to uh, nearby vessels if you see them later on. Uh, carry a notebook and a pencil if uh, time permits. Uh, notebooks and pencils uh, have various uses, of course. The four most uses, it helps you to keep a log of uh, events that are happening uh, especially uh, the consumption of stores consumption of food water at the same time it might help you to plot positions uh, or calculate uh, drift of your lifeboat or life raft based on the currents that you're experiencing so on and so forth so there are many uses of uh, notebook and a pencil and finally of course if you can carry some recreation equipment it could be a pack of playing cards or it could be fishing equipment fishing equipment is sometimes available or not sometimes but it is available on the lifeboat and life rod but if you can carry any other recreation equipment the reason is that recreation equipment uh, keeps the mind of the survivors occupied their morals are high uh, otherwise uh, if their minds are idle people keep thinking about uh, the situation that they are in and you don't want a crew of uh, low morale uh, on your lifeboat or life raft the next question is uh, what symptoms would you look for when suspecting hypothermia in a person and what treatment would you provide to a hypothermic person if inside a life raft or a lifeboat as well? All right, so it could be possible that uh, a person has simply fallen overboard and been rescued or that you are abandoning ship and people fell overboard and they have been rescued, the water was cold, they were rescued in quick time, so they are wet, maybe they are um, 
they're shivering and they, you suspect that there is hypothermia so what symptoms would you look for and what treatment would you give to a hypothermic victim all right so the casualty would experience discoloration of the skin so if a person is hypothermic uh, he or she would experience discoloration of the skin to a whiter pale shade the lips could also turn bluish in color when questioned the person may be incoherent so lost a bit dizzy uh, may sound uh, as if they have no idea what's going on um, sometimes uh, hypothermic people uh, can't recognize uh, their own friends uh, in acute hypothermia loss of memory could be expected like i said before uh, pupil dilation so your eye pupil of your eyes also dilate uh, and a loss of consciousness could also follow uh, shivering would have probably ceased uh, by now uh, if acute hy hypothermia now remember the thing that you have to be very careful about is many times in acute hypothermia or hypothermia uh, the symptoms are very similar to a person a dead person and this is where you might go wrong so make sure that you verify uh, that a person is hypothermic and not dead because many times they might look like that but make sure that you carry out all the checks necessary to ensure that uh, that you have the right symptoms all right uh, if a person is hypothermic, make sure you suspect hypothermia, make sure that you remove all the wet clothing from the person and replace it by dry clothing if available. If dry clothing is not available, then damp clothing is better than no clothing at all. But make sure they are warm. You could use blankets or you could place the person in a thermal protective aid. These thermal protective aids are full body uh, suits uh, provided to you in lifeboat and life rafts, all right? especially in life rafts. Uh, in lifeboats you have immersion suits you can put them in immersion suits they are like uh, really uh, solid and sealed uh, suits body suits available and you can put the person in that as well all right huddle other people around the chilled person to generate body heat so through body heat try to warm the person and ensure that the entrances to the survivor craft are closed in order to raise the internal temperature of the life raft or right? especially if it's a cold area the third question could be that uh, in totally enclosed lifeboats which are equipped with compressed breathing air bottle. What is the purpose of this compressed breathing air bottle in totally enclosed lifeboats? And how long does the air last for? So if you don't know, uh, the air in the compressed bottle uh, in a totally enclosed lifeboat is to allow the boat to be clear of the immediate area in batten down condition. All right, when it's closed, absolutely closed lifeboats, uh, clear out the area so as to be free from any toxics or harmful gases or if there are dangerous chemicals uh, being leaked, so you could be on a ship uh, uh, which could be leaking dangerous cargo, dangerous fumes, uh, dangerous liquids or gases and you don't want to breathe in that air because it will be poisonous and you are required to immediately clear that area. You are abandoning your ship for some reason or it could be fire and it could be fumes. You don't want to inhale those fumes and get uh, sick. So to allow that period, the totally enclosed lifeboats are equipped with bottled air. All right. So provided the boat is correctly battened down and completely sealed, the air will last for a period of about 10 minutes. Within those 10 minutes, you have to use your lifeboat's engines and clear that area as quickly as possible. Uh, so a period of 10 minutes and will tend to pressurize the inside of the craft. So the air tends to pressurize the inside of the craft. This is expected to provide enough time for the boat to head upwind into a clean atmosphere. All right, so 10 minutes should be enough if you use the boat's engine specially uh, to clear any kind of toxic environment. And as soon as you clear it, uh, then you can of course uh, open up the life raft, a life boat, and allow the natural air to come in for breathing. The other fourth question: What markings do you expect to see on the outside of a life raft canister? So uh, life rafts are tightly packed. I'm sure you guys are all mariners and seafarers who have been sailing. So I'm assuming you all know what a life raft canister is, what a life raft is. So you know that life rafts are mainly packed into a sealed container. It's called a canister, and these canisters have markings on it. So many a time surveyors and oral examiners ask you to list the markings if possible. So make sure that you list the markings. The, the, normally the canister of the life raft is marked by the following. The manufacturer's name and or logo. So it could be both or it could be either or. The instructions for launching the life raft in a diagram and text format for easy understanding. The capacity of the life raft that is designed for. So how many people can the life raft take or can hold or is equipped to carry all right whether it is equipped with a survival pack and type of the pack a or b so type a carries survival uh, survival pack of a is different from survival pack of b depends on whether you are transiting in coastal areas or transiting in uh, open ocean areas because if you're transiting in coastal areas there are higher probability of there's a higher probability of you being found 
by nearby vessels so it carries certain lesser equipment than um, pack a uh, which is carried when you are in open sea and there is lesser chances of you being found out all right the length of the painter fitted to the survival craft so painter is the rope that you use on a survival craft or a life raft to firstly inflate it uh, to hold it next to the uh, uh, your ship uh, before you let it go and uh, those painters are normally 30 odd meters long the date of the last service of the life raft the next date of the service due and the symbol of do not roll sign so these are the different uh, markings provided on the canister of a life raft all right so you need to get your life raft serviced and uh, so the date of the last service and the next date of service should be marked there because this is especially important when port state surveyors or flag state or ism audits are taking place and they come on board your ship and they are inspecting your life raft and your safety and your firefighting equipment these are the things they are looking out for they want your life rafts to be serviced regularly so that in case of emergency you should be able to use it at sea and save your life finally the last question is how often is the life raft and its associated hydrostatic release unit serviced and can this period be extended and then second part of this question is what is the period of a validity of the hammer type of a disposable hydrostatic release unit now if you don't know what a hydrostatic release unit is uh, it's difficult to explain if you are not a seafarer so if you have seen a life raft a life raft is attached with a something called we call it hru on the ship and the hru is the hydrostatic release unit basically this hydrostatic release unit is attached to the life raft in such a way that in case of an emergency if the vessel is sinking if the vessel keeps sinking and at a high, at a depth of about say two meters depth if you are unable to launch the life raft you have taken the lifeboat and gone with the lifeboat the hydrostatic release unit under a depth of about two meters of water automatically releases the life raft and make sure the life raft not only releases but inflates and then you all you have to do is basically take the life raft and uh, use it so the life raft is attached to the ships uh, ships and the vessels of course but the hydrostatic release unit ensures that the life raft is released it is inflated and then the attachment to the vessel is automatically disconnected so that you can take that life raft and go away with it uh, when it comes to the second part of the question, hammer uh, or H-A-M-M-A-R, the hammer, uh, disposable type of hydrostatic release, they are makers, they are makers of the HRUs. So they are, the survey is basically asking you the period of the validity. So to answer this question, the life raft and the HRU are both serviced at 12 monthly intervals. So every year, once a year, you need to get it serviced. Uh, make sure that you note that exception to this service period is a disposable HRU for a two years period and then replaced. So sometimes the HRU doesn't need to be serviced if it's a disposable kinds and that disposable is every two years, it is then replaced with a new one. The service period can be extended by five months for both HRUs and life rafts. Now remember, this is like a, a standard notion. Now your class and your port state or rather your flag state and, or your register of the ship, register of the ship, so your class and the state under which it is registered may have different requirements. They have may have stricter requirements. And that is the problem with um, uh, mentioning all these kind of facts because uh, sometimes these requirements change with uh, classification societies or port of registries or states under which, of course, your ship is registered. So they change. All right. The next part of this question was, what is the period of validity of the hammer type of disposable HRU? So the period of validity is two years. All right. So normally two years and then it's replaced with a new one. Your life raft should be replaced or rather not replaced but serviced every year and make sure that uh, uh, the next service date is also displayed on the life raft. All right. So I took some random five odd six, seven, eight questions. Uh, some of the questions had two parts to it. The reason is sometimes your answers will lead you into the second part. The surveyor will ask you the second part of that question as well. That is why I put both the questions together. So um, I hope you like these videos. If you're watching it, please uh, subscribe to the videos and also send me comments and your feedback. Yeah, I want to know whether this is a, a useful uh, video or not. If, if it's not serving any purpose to you guys, you are free to let me know that as well. I'll stop making these videos then. And thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I'll see you soon with my next video. All the best.